Okay, the next one we're going to look at is actually going to be number of work orders at sh waiting, waiting scheduled and the current date is less than 14 days before the scheduled start date. So what we're seeing here is we've got a work order and its scheduled date, which it has, is um, within 14 days of the current date. And the current date we're going to use as a data extract date. And the reason that's important is if the work order has actually been scheduled with, by putting a scheduled date in but isn't at the scheduled status, it may be that we need to go and confirm that that actually is the proper um, scheduled start date. So for example, it could be a work order that was rough cut scheduled at that date due to um, maybe a PM that's been scheduled at that time. And it may be that the plant condition or the availability of resources or some services is such that we need to go and change the scheduled date and, and confirm confirm that um, we've got an actual confirmed and discussed scheduled date. So that's exactly what we're looking at here because there will be a risk to the schedule execution if they're still waiting scheduled and they haven't been reviewed. So same sort of process as before. We're going to go and add a, a new column. And this column is going to be waiting scheduling. less than 14 days before scheduled schedule start date so equals so there's a few things we've got to calculate here and we're going to introduce a concept here um, i'm going to use something called variables and this is where you can actually add in a fixed value. Even though it's called a variable, it's actually a fixed value, which gets defined at the time when the um, when the calculated column is, is, is actually um, calculated. And that's when the data gets imported into Power BI. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to put a variable in place, and that is going to be days to schedule start date. Now, we could have done something similar for days at current status, but I actually think days at current status is a, a useful um, calculated column to have in your data model, as sometimes it's it, if you're looking at a list of work orders, it is useful to see for each work order how many days it has been at its current status and see that visually in a in a um, in a list of work orders. And um, typically, this report would then show that list if you were to drill through into some of these and, and, and start to understand what are the 21 work orders that need to be um, that need to be addressed. We're not going to do it in this particular um, set of lessons, we're just interested in defining the KPIs, but that's why I would create a days at current status calculated column, but days to schedule start date is quite localised to this particular measure or calculated column, so I'm just going to create as a available within the calculated column. So date diff, we're going to use that again, and this time it is the um, status date, work, work order status date, and it's the scheduled start date, and it's going to be in days. Okay, so that's going to give us a number of days between the, the, the how many days it's been at its current status, and the in fact actually it's not the days at current status. It's the data extract, yeah, data extract date and the current schedule date. So that's how many days is it until the scheduled start date. The next variable we're going to um, to look at is going to be just a result, and that is going to be where we store the bulk of the calculation. So if, and then we we'll go straight into an and statement, and we're going to check first of all the status of the work order status. 
and I think that's fine. There we go. Work order status equals W shed W S C H D. Yep, W shed. And then the second is days. And here we can see here it's got a variable, so it's got an X and Y. You can see that's in green. There's less than 14 days. So if both of them are met, then what we're going to do is put a, a 1, and otherwise we're going to put a 0. So let's add these down here. 0 can stay there. And then let's close off this if statement. And then because, we, because we've used these variable variables, we need a return statement, and then we're going to return the result. And that should work fine. So let's add some comments in here because this is another one that if you go back and look at this um, at a future date, you're probably going to spend a little bit of time just um, understanding what's going on here. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to put a note here that um, basically, I guess we've mentioned it before, but it's worth mentioning again. If the work order is scheduled before the data extract date, then it will have a negative. Um, so I'll just put a wee note in here. Note. So what we will get is any work orders that have been scheduled in the past as well. So this will also flag work orders which have been scheduled in the past. So basically work orders that have been scheduled, they've been missed and they've never been rescheduled again. So you've got work orders that have been scheduled before the current date or the data extra date. Okay, so that I think is is fine for just now. And then the next thing we're going to do is we're going to go and add a new measure and we're going to count these. So counting them is going to be straightforward. We're just going to actually go back here and I'm just going to copy this. And I'm going to add in a new measure. Ah, oh, looks like it never copied. Yeah, you've got to be careful with this. Sometimes it um it has to be the dark blue for it to copy. If it's that um that light kind of blue colour there and you copy it, it doesn't it doesn't actually copy it to the clipboard, so just be aware of that. So let's go back and get another measure. Third time lucky. Go and then we'll call this count equals calculate same as the other ones count rows and then the expression is going to be the work order variable table and the filter is going to be the which one were we working on again? It was scheduling. There we go equals one. And we're going to pull that into here, change it into a card, and we can see there's quite a few of these. Quite a few of these here. And then we'll pull that into this particular table as well, and we'll see that building up. This probably needs to be shortened this um this title's here. Um but just for the purposes of a for this demonstration we'll leave them quite descriptive, but you probably shorten these right down. And we can see we've got four hundred out of the waiting scheduled, which is nearly four thousand. We have more, surprisingly only four hundred and um forty four that are um that are 
um, well, no surprise, there's still quite a lot there that have been um, set to wait and scheduled, but I've actually got a scheduled start date in the next 14 days. So. Okay, so that is the work orders which are wait and scheduled that we need to be interested in. In the next video, we will look at work orders that have are waiting for the um, the history to be entered and reviewed. I'll talk to you then.